In this video, I'm going to go over how to configure the mail settings for the contact forms on your site. So logging into your site and getting to the dashboard, you'll see a screen that looks like this. On the left-hand side, you'll see a bunch of buttons. The one we're looking for is contact, generally shows up right around here. Clicking on that button, it'll show a list of all the contact forms on your site, and we can configure each of them. So just click the name of the contact form you want to configure. It'll bring up a bunch of settings. We want to click the mail tab right here. So there's a couple fields here that we can work on. The first one is two. Um, this two field is where the email is going. Whenever somebody submits the form, this is whose email is it going to show up in. So generally this is the site administrator or the salesperson or the person who's in charge of dealing with all the orders or uh, customer service or you know any of those departments or people like that. So the default is the site admin email. Um, you can put in an email address here if you wish. Um, I'll show you where you can change your site admin email later. Uh, these are really nice in that if you change your site admin email for any reason, you don't have to go through and change all your contact forms. They'll all update themselves. Next up is from. This will be the uh, email address and name that uh, this is coming from. So the site title and then uh, just a generic email address uh, just to uh, show that this is coming from your website. So you can see here, it's worried that the sender email address does not belong to the site domain. Um, generally, that's okay, but we, uh, we recommend that uh, unless it's not possible to make sure that your site domain is the same or that this from email address is the same as your site domain. Because if it sees it coming from two different domains, some email servers might uh, flag that as spam and it might, even, might not even make it to your email box. It might just be totally flagged and shot down immediately. So that's fine just because we're on our testing server here. If I were to change it to deviconicwebhq.com right here, that error would go away. But if we were in production and your website is example.com, and if you had it notifications at example.com, everything will be okay, and uh, there should be no reason that it wouldn't show up in your inbox. Next up is the subject. This is where, uh, whenever you get the email to your inbox, this is what will appear in the subject line. So the default is site title and then your subject. Um, we could say a new form has been submitted. And then we can do a colon, then the site title, and then the subject, just in case you're dealing with different sites and you, and, uh, you wanna make sure you're getting it from the right site. And uh, this big block of text right here really gets your attention in your email inbox. Next up here, additional headers. This is where we can do a reply to email address. So this is for you whenever you're replying to someone who has contacted you. Whenever you hit that reply button, it'll go to the right email address. It won't go to the notifications at example.com address. So it's just reply to just like that. And then we put in the brackets the email address that the person has entered. Down here, we have the message body. This is where the actual message, the contents of the contact form that they just filled out will be sent to you. Up here, you can see all of these little things in brackets. These are fields in the contact form that are named. It's as simple as formatting it like this. So for example, we could say name, colon, and then we can click this right here, and it'll add it in. And then we can do email down here. We can do a subject line. And then lastly, we could do the message. I generally start the message on a separate line just because it can sometimes be pretty lengthy depending on what they're submitting to your site. Just makes the email for you personally a little easier to read. Once we have everything done and we're happy with the way it looks, we can hit save. And once we hit save, we can go back up top still going to tell me about that configuration error, but that's okay. You can see here that now all of these, they're not bold anymore. Anything that's not used in these fields will be bolded, which means that any information that a user puts in that contact form won't make it to your inbox or won't make it to one of these fields. So definitely make sure that none of these are bolded. Make sure that they're all just the regular font, which means that they are included in here and that whenever users submit their form, all the information they put in there will be submitted and read by you. 
Once you're happy with the way everything looks here, you can hit save. That'll update your contact form. That'll update all the settings and make any new contact uh, submissions to that form. Uh, follow these settings from here on out. And I said that I would touch on where to change your site admin email. To do that, you go to settings down here. And right here, you can see the administration email address. You can change that email address right here. And that is the email address that will receive any of the contact form notifications if you have it set up like that. If you have any questions about the email settings for the contact form or any other questions, feel free to let us know and we'll be happy to help you out. Thank you.